Hola and what's up to you all, Matriculants. Welcome to it. This is Len Extra with me, AB. It is a lovely Monday at Triple M Day. Mindset is Matt's Monday. I hope you had a great day at school. And I know that some of you were writing. So I can't wait to hear from you guys. How did you, go, uh, how did you guys write? Um, uh, I'm sure you guys did well because I trust you guys. I believe in you guys. Well, today we do have a Wilson again. Say, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well on your album. I'm album. good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good yeah. to be with you again today. Yeah, great, great. Fantastic day, guys. We have uh, Matric. And uh, I'm today I'm doing revision of functions, guys. And algebra, grade elevens, you can still stay there. I mean, um, the, the functions that we do, uh, actually in grade 11, you're doing matric. And the algebra, which is the same kind of a thing, I'll be looking at an example on nature of roots, uh, exponents, um, and, and those functions, guys, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm broke. Yeah, 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 don't yeah. give away everything. <laughs> 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 you guys need to stay tuned. But, well, you can also chat with me. Let's communicate and chat via facebook.com forward slash Extra. Like that page, share that page. Uh, at the moment, we have about 79,500 and something like. So, guys, let's get to 100 by the end of this year or by the end of this term because I have, I have trust in you guys. Don't panic because... During this time, I know that you guys tend to panic a lot on the page, but don't. We're here to help you, and you guys should help one another on the page. That's our spirit. On Twitter, follow us at Len Extra. And remember, we do have your notes links on Facebook, which is the viewing option and the downloading option. And lastly, we have the Test Yourself link, whereby if you answer those uh, questions correctly, you stand a chance of winning this awesome Casio Calculate. You need this body during your exam. It's the best body to have ever. It has about 254 functions. as we are doing functions today so guys you'll be um maybe browsing will share some of his tips later on on using this calculator some of the tricks that you guys can use as matriculates or shortcuts on using this calculator but lastly we also have the nokia mobile mathematics app whereby if you log on it you can challenge yourself and challenge other mindsets it's all about mathematics you can revise algebra and functions what we're doing today and let's see how well do you understand them if you're struggling we are still here to help you your code is simple i to i k i to i k so guys with that in further ado let's get to the lesson okay thank you abram okay guys uh, welcome there out there uh, i hope you're ready uh, you have a pen in front of you you want to try to do the problems i mean the nature of mathematics and how we study maths you don't look at the problem and there's nothing wrong if you do maths and you don't understand the problem straight away that's, that's the nature of maths Okay, so you try to do it again. That's the essence of mathematics in a way. You try to do it again until you understand it. You don't get worried if you don't understand the problem. Okay, and matriculants are there. You still have time. This is, this is June. You still have lots and lots of times. Grade 11s are there. Pre-matrix, you're also welcome to view the show. Okay, great. Let's see, guys, what I have. We have revision of functions in algebra. So I'll be revising the functions functions and algebra okay Good. let's see what I have there I have a challenge question for you guys let's see what I have you have a function a graph which is y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c which is the parabola which is given which of the following statement is true so let's see that there. there's the graph okay which of the following statement is true where b squared minus 4 is equal to 0, is c bigger than 0, is a bigger than 0, or is b squared minus 4 is equal to 0, c bigger than 0, and so on, guys. I hope you're going to try the problem, guys. Post the answer on Facebook. Which of the following makes this true? Okay, post the answer on Facebook, guys. Okay, great. I hope you try this challenge question, guys. Fantastic. Let's see what we have now. Okay. There's the summary there. By now, you know the standard form of a parabolic function. There's the standard form of a parabolic function. ax squared plus bx plus c. How do you find the y-intercept? You make x zero. That's how you find the x-intercept. You make x zero, then you get your y-intercept, which is the c-value in this case. For any graph, Hyperbola, exponential, straight line, the same principle holds. Then the x-intercept, you make y zero. Remember, if you're struggling to factorize and so on, you can use your quadratic formula. So to get the x-intercept, you make the y zero, and then you, s you solve the x-value. Okay, good. 
Remember, the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Because the parabola is symmetric this way. What is the x value that makes that parabola symmetric? So that's the x of symmetry, which is that, which is minus b is minus b divided by 2a. That is the equation of the axis of symmetry. To get the turning point is the axis of symmetry, then this value, you take the value of the axis of symmetry, which is x, you substitute that into the original function to get the corresponding y value, okay, to get your turning point, if it's in that form. Great. Another way for a parabola, if it's in that form, you notice anything, is that the completing of the square form. So the turning point in this case is minus p, which I get from there, and q. There's your turning point. Okay. Then horizontal shift. If P is bigger than zero, okay, there's, there's P. Then this is a horizontal shift. P also, this is horizontal to the left. And when P is less than zero, it's horizontal to the right. And this moves the graphs and down. Okay, if I add Q, if I make minus, then the graph moves down. If I add, then my functions moves up. Okay, this, those are for P and Q. Okay, let's look at the hyperbola, this side. Hyperbola. This is a standard form for the hyperbola. K over X plus P plus the Q there. Same principle holds. P is the horizontal shift to the left. And P horizontal. If, if P is less than zero, it's horizontal shift to the right. And so on with the Q, I can move the graph up and down with the value of Q. Okay, guys. And what about the asymptote? If X is negative Q, then I get my ne negative P. Or y is q. Those are your uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes, guys. Okay, great. Let's look at exponential. What about exponential function? This is the standard form. Same thing. If p, this is the horizontal, shift to the left. Okay. Okay, and p there is horizontal shift to the right, okay, and your asymptote, which is y is equal to p, is your asymptote. If you check your hyperbola, you have two asymptotes, the horizontal and the vertical. What about exponential? You just have what? One exponent, one horizontal asymptote. Do you have asymptote in parabola? No, I just have the axis of symmetry. Okay, great, fantastic. Now, let's look at another concept, exponential. Exponential laws, this exponential law, guys, remember, they only work if you have multiplication everywhere, then I can apply all this exponential law, guys, okay? Okay, same base, add exponents, same base, if I divide exponents, I minus exponents, and this is power to power, the exponents times that, and this times that, and that, and the lastly, Law of exponents, guys. Okay, just to, to remind you this, I, I think by now you can, you can do this laws of exponents. Good. The nature of roots. I love this section. This is, this is one of the, my favorite sections in maths. So nature of roots, before you do your nature of roots, your, expression, your equation must be in that form. And remember that delta is given by b squared minus 4ac. Okay, there is your delta. If I have ax squared plus bx plus c in the standard form, then delta, where do I get that delta? If we check the square root, underneath the square root from the quadratic formula, it actually gives you a delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, great. Now, let's check what we have there. If the roots are real, delta must be bigger or equal to zero for real roots. 
equal roots, delta is equal to zero. A rational root is that delta is a perfect square, like 16, 25. X squared is a perfect square. The roots are rational. Irrational roots, delta is non-perfect square. It's not equal to a perfect square. Okay, like 5. 5 is not a perfect square. Therefore, the roots of that uh, would be irrational. And non-real or imaginary roots, delta is less than zero, guys. Okay, that's the part of nature roots. Okay, great. So I went through the summary. Okay, so I think we're going to go through the break. Then when I come back, straight we hit the first problem. Okay. I'm well said. Well, on that note, here's a, a quote from Numfunde Cheryl Shazi. She says, it's not about what you know, but it is all about how you use what you know. It's all about that mindset as in, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's nice. Huh? That's a very nice one. Yeah, great. It's all about how, y how you use what you know. So guys, use whatever you know to your best advantage and use it correctly. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Matriculants. Now, exciting news. I'm about to announce last week's winner on the KSU calculator, and I'll do the drum roll, and then you announce the winner. I will, I will, I will. Let I me will. try yes. it and add some sound effects. Ndicheni <laughs> Poza. Is that correct? Poza. Poza. Okay, yeah. it's Poza. Okay. Yeah, it's Poza. Okay, well done, Ndicheni. Congratulations, well to be like uh, Pozo, all you need to, to do is to do the test yourself questions, answer them correctly, get most of them or all of them correctly. I've been having some complaints from some people saying I've been entering but not winning. It's either one, yes you did get the, the answers correctly, but someone got them correctly also uh, before you. Yeah. So it's also about the time. So if you got your answers and sent them uh, at 6 and someone sent them at like a few seconds before 6, <laughs> then they get to be the winner. So time counts two mindset. So don't waste any further more time. Get to the challenge question right now and the test yourself questions. Great. Fantastic. Good. Let's see. Um, first question. Let's see what I have is Very important, guys, again, to read the whole problem. You know, if you don't read, you might miss some small thing there so let's see what i have here in the sketch alongside given as a standard form likely there's a minus x uh, a over x minus p plus q c is the point of intersection of the axis of symmetry c is the point of intersection of axis of symmetry there's c there i can see my c there f uh, so we have symmetry of f, we have y equals to x plus 2, y equals to x plus 2, the gradient is positive, so it's actually this straight line, y equals to minus x, minus 4, it's that straight line, then they intersect at c, f passes through the point 1, 0, so this point passes on our hyperbola. The first question, find the coordinates of C. Where are the coordinates of C? There's the coordinates of C, guys. And is, is where actually the two straight line intersects like this. How do I find the coordinate of intersection of the two graphs? You just what? You just make the two graphs equal when you solve them simultaneously. Let's see what I can I do. So I have two straight line. I can make them equal, which is uh, y, okay, in this case, let me just uh, make them y is x plus 2, which is the first straight line, and the second straight line is y equals to minus x minus 4. So to determine the coordinates of c, what I do, I make the two line equal, which is x plus 2 is equals to minus x minus 4, then I move the x the other side, I get 2x, because if I move this this side, I get 2x, then I move this the other side, I get negative 6, divide by 2, divide by 2, you get a 6 axis, 
negative 3. And we get x is negative 3. Check yourself. Is x negative there? Let's see. Is this true? Is that possible? Yes. Here, this x-axis, all x's are negative there. So this, if you see, you get a positive answer, then you made a mistake or something because this must be negative everywhere. Okay, now, I have the x value there. How do I get the y value? I take this, sub into any straight line. I can sub into the straight line there, then I get y. What is x? The x value there is minus 3 plus 2, therefore y is negative 1. Okay, then I'm not done. The question was, find the coordinates, guys. The coordinate is an ordered pair. So I cannot find x and y, then stop and say, this is the coordinate of c. No, that's not correct. The coordinate is an ordered pair of x and y. So I have to write the coordinate of c in this case. So therefore, the coordinates of c is x is minus 3, y is negative 1. That is the coordinate. So if you write minus 1, minus 3, uh, you won't get all your marks. Uh, so you have to write the coordinate, which is minus 3, minus 1. That's the first question. Done. Second question is find, so the coordinates of C, let me erase this and see, is minus 3. Uh, the coordinates of C is minus 3, minus 1. So the second question is find the equation of F. What is the equation of F? This is the hyperbola. Can you see? The equation of f is hyperbola. Let me write the standard form. There's the standard form. So, find the equation of f is the hyperbola, which is y equals to a x minus p plus q. Okay, so I have to find a, p, and q. I, I have to find the value of a and q. Let me see if I can read this from the graph. So, if you check here, the coordinates of C have minus 3, minus 1. So, that is the coordinates of C at that point. What it means, this line is x minus 3. And what can you notice? And what about this line? It's y is minus 1. Those two are actually my asymptote. The value of P and Q. I don't know if you can see that. So y there and x there, that give me the value of p and q, my asymptote. Let me reverse this. So p and q, if I reverse my p and q, I'll, I get that. See, I get that y equals to a x plus 3, which is, which is x and minus 1, which is the Q there. This isn't complete also. I substituted my P and Q, but I still have to find the value of A. How do I find the value of A? Remember, if I have a point that lies on the graph, I can take that point and substitute the point into the standard form. For any graph, it holds, the statement holds. So, to find the value of A, find the point that lies on the graph and substitute the point into the standard form. Let's see if we have any point that lies on the graph. Okay, so, there is the point that lies on the graph. 1, 0. It lies on the hyperbola. 1, 0. So, I have to sub 1, 1, 0. Not minus 1. It's 1, 0. Then if I sub 1, 0, what is x? What is y? y is 0. What about x? a over 1 plus 3 minus 1. Then I have to f solve the value of a. So this is 0. a over 4 minus 1. Then I can do this. I can multiply by 4. 4 is my LCD. If I times this by 4, I get 0. 
then I, I get a negative 4, therefore a is equal to 4. But remember the question is find the equation. So I, what I have to do, I have to write my equation down, which is y equals to 4 over x plus 3 minus 1. This is the equation we have to determine. Okay, guys, I hope it makes sense. Take a point that lies on the graph and substitute that. Remember, you can't take any point uh, on your Cartesian plane and substitute in the, st in the standard form unless that point lies on the graph. It's on the graph. Then you can substitute the point, guys. Fantastic. I hope we're enjoying maths, guys. Okay, fantastic. Good. Let's look at the next question. What do we have here? Beautiful. The next question. Okay. The graph of f is defined by this. This f at x is defined by x squared. Identify the graph that represent identify the graph that represent the following transformations. This f, let's see f, this f. There. Can you see the f? Now we have to identify the graphs defined by the following transformation. First transformation, second transformation, and the third transformation. Now, check this. What is x inside? f of x minus 2 means that you take the graph, you move it two units to the right. I mean, you might think because, no, minus, uh, I'm thinking left. It's actually two units to the right. Let's check a graph that is transformed two units to the right. Two units to the right. Two units to the right. This is the graph. Because two units to the right there. Can you see? Think about the turning point is zero. Then if I transform two units to the right, I will get that. So this is the graph. I think this is G. It's graph G. So this is G. What about f at x plus 2? f at x plus 2. The transformation where you move f at x two units up. So, which graph moved two units up? Which one moved two units up? It's actually this one. Can you see the graph? This one moves moved two units up, which is P in this case. P. So, P is the graph. Okay, what about when you multiply f at x by negative? Uh, where's the graph? What, what if you multiply by negative, you're actually reflecting it into the x-axis. So let's see a graph reflected into the x-axis. It's actually two, this and this. They're both reflected into the x-axis. Will it be S or R? Let's see. It can't be this one because the f at x is from the origin, so it should be this, which is R. So for this one, we have R. Okay, guys, good. Those transformations, they're really good. Learn the transformation, practice and practice and practice, guys. I hope this makes sense. Good. Try next question. Let's see what I have here. Okay, next question. Okay, read again. We're given f at x, which is x squared, 6x plus 14, and g at x, which is minus 3x, Minus 4, which is the parabola and the straight line. We give it that AB is 54 units. Where's AB? AB, this distance, is 54 units. So we have that distance is 44, 54 units. The question is, calculate OC. Where is OC? The distance from origin to see, how can I do this? How can I really do this, guys? Are, are you processing? Are you thinking? I have a parabola there, a straight line, and I have a distance between the two graphs. I have to calculate a distance from O to C. Let's see. Can you think of any formulation? Let's see. The distance from A to B, AB, can you see the AB? which is the distance, that gap, 
is actually, this is f at x, which is our parabola, and this is our g at x, which is a straight line. So the distance between two graphs, AB, is f at x, which is the top graph, minus g at x, which is the bottom graph. Okay, g at x, which is the bottom graph there. g at x. So what is f at x? There's my f at x. x squared, 6x plus 14, which is x squared, 6x plus 14, minus, very important, in bracket there, because you're minusing the whole thing, which is my parabola, which is the straight line, minus 3x minus 4, minus 3x minus 4, it's very important that you have this minus, because this is, you're minusing the whole of g at x, okay, and let's do algebra here. But what is AB? Let's look at A. What is AB? AB is given, which is 54. So now I can say this is 54 there. Then let me do some algebra. 554. This is x squared. 6x, 14. And 3x, I distribute the minus, plus 4x, then I get 54, this is x squared, uh, if I add the 2, I get 9x, this 2, I get that this is uh, 18, then I get an equation, can you see that? I get an equation, let me move everything one side, 0, x squared, 9x plus 18 minus 54. Therefore, this is 0. x squared, 9x plus what is 18 minus 54? 18 minus 54. 18 minus, uh, minus 20 there. If you minus 20, you get uh, 34. Uh, so it's actually minus 36, okay? Then uh, factorize the zero. If you can't factorize this, use your quadratic formulas. X, X, I want the factors of 36 to give me 9, which is 12 and 3. This is plus and this is minus. Therefore, X is negative 12 or x equals to 3. Now, let's interpret this. So, x is minus 12, x is 3. So, actually, the distance from there to there, if you get the coordinates for that, is minus 3, 0. This minus 12 actually is somewhere there. It will give you another point between the two graphs. The minus 12 will be somewhere there, minus 12. So, the distance from O to C is three units. So OC is equal to three units. Okay, guys, uh, I hope it makes sense. I mean, I have two graphs, the parabola, the straight line, then the, the distance between the two graphs was 54. Then calculate the distance from there to there. What do I do? It's the top graph minus the bottom graph equal to 54. Then I solve x. If I solve x, I get negative 12 and 3, but I'm looking into that where x is positive, so that should be 3, okay, and that's minus 12, guys, okay, so which is the distance in between. This is actually positive 3, because I, I, get, I get positive 3, guys. Okay, the distance is 3. Okay, I think we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll look at the challenge question, Abra. What do you think? Awesome. Let's do that. And in the meantime, guys, I can see your questions. You guys are on fire. That's what we want. After the break, we'll be answering your questions. And remember, the challenge question is waiting for you guys. I like one thing about some of the people that are answering the challenge question, Wilson. You know what they say? Yeah. They say, my answer... Uh, 
Okay, well, someone <laughs> said that. My answer is A, and I'm 100% sure. <laughs> <laughs> great, that's fantastic. That's confidence. That's You're great, great. <laughs> confidence right there. Well, guys, we'll see you after the break. Great, fantastic, guys. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Because I'm Mr. Nice Guy, I just shared a link with you guys, which is a very, very helpful link. It is a link to the exemplars, 2014 grade 12 exemplars. So guys, do check them out. And here's a great comment for you, uh, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, one of your students. Who's that? <laughs> it's Kev. Kevin, Kevin. Canada. Yeah, yes, great. he says, Hi, Mr. Wilson, it's Kev from your class. Great lesson, I'm really enjoying it. This is beautiful mathematics. Indeed. Great, 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 Kevin. I hope you're doing well. They keep working hard, Kevin. I know you can do it, but okay. And okay. no extra free marks for great, you, Kev, no, just no, because no you send a shout out. No, <laughs> you gotta work for them. But otherwise, all the best to you and all other mindsets. For now, let's get to the challenge question. Okay, great, guys. Uh, I don't know, Abram, do you, have, do you have answers for the challenge question? Do you have any? I have what so many let's answers. See what do you have? What do you have? What, what do you have? What, what is... Uh, no? Okay, I've, I've got B. We got B. I've got B. I've got A, 100% sure. Wow. Who's that 100% sure? It's A. Hey, let's see. Yeah, hey, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, others, most of them, C, C, C. Yeah. So many C's and B's. Yeah. And so many A's also. So many A's. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, guys. L let's try. There's the graph. Which of the following statement is true for this graph? What is, what is actually this? What is b squared minus 4ac? This is actually a discriminant. If the discriminant is equal to 0, what does it mean? If delta is equal to 0 from the nature roots, therefore the roots are equal. What do we mean when we say the roots are equal? It implies that it's something like when I solve x, I'll, I'll have something like this, x squared, 2x plus 1. So if you factorize this, if this is equal to 0, if you factorize, you have x plus 1, x plus 1, then you get that x is minus 1. Or also, x is minus 1. Can you see that? You get the same thing. Oh, what did I do? Can, can you check? Okay. Let's see what I do. Okay. Sorry. So you get that x is minus 1 also. Another x is minus 1. So you get two equal roots. Can you see? You get two equal roots. So your parabola won't have x intercept there and x intercept, which is two different x x axes. They'll actually have one x axis. The roots are equal. We start there. So this is the delta. When delta is equal to 0. So it's either this or this, because this can be, this can be. Because if delta is bigger than zero, we'll, we'll have two real roots, because delta is bigger than zero. Okay. Now, it passed this. So it's A or B. So far, it's A or B. Let's see. <laughs> so <laughs> between A or B, based on this, because this two can be, Abram. Mm. So A and B pass. Let's look at the, the Let's next just one. take A, B here. Okay, A, B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, C bigger than zero. Remember, what is your C? Your C is your y-intercept. Is C bigger than zero? Yes. It's bigger than zero there. So it's still A, B. Still A, B. But now, the last one. A bigger than zero. A less than zero. What does A do? Remember, if A is positive, you have a smiley face of a parabola. A negative, something like this. So A is positive. Then our final answer is A in this case. And well done if you managed to get the answer there. A is our correct answer. Okay, beautiful. Great. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure Quinte is very much excited because <laughs> maybe he's probably saying, I told you guys. <laughs> so well done, Quinte. Well, well done to Quinte. You're, you're, you're 100, you're 100. Sure. Can I take some few questions, Abram? Yes, let's get to yeah. Mindset's questions. Yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. Okay. okay, let me take some comments also. Uh, this guy is a great teacher. I wish he was my teacher too. 
That's from Kachiso. <laughs> Kachiso, I'm teaching you, I'm touching wherever you are. Well, you know, mathematics is universal. Wherever you are, we're touching you. That's mindset is you're going to do well. I'm telling you that. Okay, awesome. great concept. Yeah, great nice comment. Yeah. Uh, nice head, Abram. And good teaching from Mr. Sokana. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> Let me take some of the questions yeah, from you guys. Yeah, yeah. All right, the first one is from Asenyi Wenjovu. Please help, what do we have to do when we are told to restrict the domain of an invest? Okay. Okay, that's actually, what can you, let me put it problem. What can I, how can I restrict the domain of the invest to make it a function? Let me take, uh, let's take this. I'm going to do it here. Let me take a parabola. There's, y equals to x squared. Is this a function? How do you test this is a function? Use your what? Your vertical line test. If I use my vertical line test, if I use my vertical line test, I, I cut the graph at one point. Therefore, that is a function. For example, if I take something like this, is this a function? No, check. If I use my vertical line test, I cut this at two points, okay, for this to be a function, there must exist one corresponding y value for every x. So this is not a function, this is a function. Now, the, what about, what is the inverse of this? The inverse for this, let me draw it somewhere here, the inverse for this is this. There's the inverse. I still have y and x. Is this inverse a function? No. Why no? Because if I draw a line, this is this. So if I draw a line, I cut this at two points. Therefore, it's not a function. But what can I do to the domain to make this a, a, fun a function? It's either delete this. Can you see? If I delete this, I just have a line like this. Therefore, this is a function because I cut this at one point only if I draw my vertical line test. Or also, because if I, ha I have this, I can also, or maybe, I don't want to delete that, I can delete that. Even this, now, this is a function. Why is this a function? Because I cut this at one point. Then what, how can I restrict the domain to make this a function? Let's go back and look at this parabola. If I look at this parabola, to restrict this to make it a domain, it's either if x is bigger or equals to zero. I'm going to write this down and erase this. So to restrict this parabola to make it a function, I can do this. I can say if x, if x is bigger or equals to zero, or if x is less or equals to zero, then this is how can I restrict that parabola to make it a function because the inverse is this way. I can delete this or delete this. Okay, guys, great. Fantastic. Do you have another question? Yes, I have another one. Okay. Um, this one is from um, Gwandi Swazwondo. She says, why do, you, why do you subtract the straight line from the parabola? Why do I subtract the straight line from the parabola? Yes. Good question. Okay. Le Let's check the problem. This is should be the, the third, th this problem. Why do I subtract? It's actually not the straight line. Why do I subtract the parabola from the straight line? Okay, let's say, I'm assuming, let's say this point, okay, this point, if I have to find the distance, guys, the distance between the two graphs, and I have the y value there, and the y value, I'll use the y value, because I'm finding the distance there then you will say that y value minus that y value. And remember, the y value at that point is represent, represented by that parabola, and the y value at that point is represented by the straight line. That's why I say the top graph minus the bottom graph. The y value of that minus that y value to get this distance. Okay, great. Do you have uh, another question? I think this one is just what you, you yeah. have done from Sianda saying, could you please repeat that question where we had to calculate the length of yeah. OC between the parabola and straight line? Okay, this is what the question, the top graph, 
which is the parabola, which one is the top? Here, it's the parabola. Which one is the bottom? Straight line. Top graph minus bottom graph, and the distance between them is 54. You make it equal to 54, then if you solve x, you get x is negative 12, or x is 3, and therefore x is 3, then if you check, this must be positive 3, therefore the distance is 3 units between the two graphs. Okay, okay, good. Okay, great. We can move on. Fun fantastic. Guys, uh, we have more questions. I think I'm going to skip this one. And uh, we have a third. Uh, I'm going to skip. If I get time, I'll come back to this. I like inequalities, guys. Okay, let's look at this inequality. For which values of x will the expression be real? For which values of x will this expression be real? What do you think? If I have a square root of something, how can I make that to be real? This will be real. Think about the square root of minus 4. What is the square root of minus 4? Uh, if you put that in a calculator, you get error. Uh, it's not real. It's actually a complex number. It's, it's not non-real. But how can I make this real? I can make this real if x plus 1 over x minus 4 is bigger or equal to 0. So why bigger or equal to 0? For this to be real, anything inside the square root must be bigger or equal to zero to make it real. Then I can solve this inequality now. Then how do I solve this? Uh, what I do, there are lots of ways to do this, the table method, the graphs. Uh, I like doing this because remember, you cannot multiply by this because we don't know the value of this is positive or negative, whether this is positive or negative. But I can multiply by x minus 4 squared both sides. X minus 4 squared both sides. Why do I do that? Remember, inequality, if you multiply by a negative number, you change the sign. We don't know whether X minus 4 is negative or positive. To be safe, I multiply by a square number, and that won't affect my inequality. Then this is 0. Okay, this is zero because zero times anything uh, that is zero. So I'll have bigger zero there, and this will cancel the whole thing there. And then I have x minus four, x plus one. And if you check this, what I if I come here, then I write critical values. All right, critical values, very important. X is 4 and X is negative 1. I'll be, this is not solution. My critical values, I'm going to use this to test where's my solution. Then what I do, I draw a number line. I put minus 4 there. I put 4 there. Then I take... Any value, I want to test this. I take any value, let me take zero. Where is zero? Zero is in between there. If I take zero, substitute it back into the original. If I make x zero, if you make x zero, this is zero, you get negative four. You get negative four, you make this zero, you get one. And is this bigger equals to zero? So you get minus four. Is bigger equals to zero. I just substitute zero there, then I get minus four bigger. Is this true? Is this statement true? Therefore, this statement is not true. This statement, any number between minus one and four, it won't work. Okay, try this at home. Take a number after five. If you take a number after five, substitute it there, you'll find that number is actually bigger than bigger than zero it will work this side if you take a number less than minus one substitute the number there you get that the number is actually bigger than zero which actually works then now i write my solution that x is less or equals to negative one or x is bigger or equals to four let's check back i actually this isn't correct 
There's something I have to do there. Let's look back. Actually, X, if I restrict it, you have to restrict. Can X be 4? If I was to check that, X can't be 4. Because you can't divide by 0. So X cannot be 4. X can't be 4. Because if X is 4, the expression is undefined. Then what I can do from that, I have to delete this. So X is only bigger than 4. Another way of doing this, drawing the parabola with this x-intercept, this x-intercept, and that x-intercept, and you check where is the parabola positive. It's po positive this arm and that arm, where x is negative, when x is smaller than 1 or x is bigger than 4. That's another way of doing this. Okay, guys, let me look at another problem. Let me jump into this. Okay, next one. Love this one. Nature roots. Determine the value of K. If the equation, that equation, has equal roots. What do you know about equal roots? Equal roots. Delta is equal to zero. So, let me simplify the expression. My LCD is X. I get X squared. If I simplify this, I get x squared, I times that by x also, I get 2x, I get 2xk, then I get 9 plus kx squared. Okay, move everything one side, I get x squared minus kx squared, 2x which is uh, plus 2x plus 2xk minus 9 equals to 0 because I have to write this in a standard form b squared minus 4ac into ax squared plus bx plus c in the standard form then if I have this if I take it a common factor x squared there I get that 1 minus k is equal to x squared. Take a common factor x there, you get that this is actually 2 plus 2k x minus 9. This is equal to 0. Therefore, this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. What? This is my a value, b value, c value. Then I can what? Write my discriminant, which is what? Delta is b squared. What is b squared? That is b squared, which is 2 plus 2k squared squared minus 4. What is the a value? a value is 1 minus k. And the c value is minus 9. And then what do you do there? Uh, so delta, you can simplify this. If I simplify this, I get 4. Okay, if I square that, I get 8k plus 4k squared. And from there, what I get, if I times, I can times 9 inside if I want. First, minus 4 inside, then I get minus 9 plus 9k. Okay, then delta, which is 4, 8k, 4k squared, what is now 4 times 9, uh, 9 times 2 is 18, 18 plus 18, I get uh, 36, is that correct, uh, 36, Yes. then I get plus 36, then if I times that, I get minus 36, Okay, then I add like terms there, then I get delta, I get my delta, which is still, I have 4. Uh, if I add this and this, I get minus 28k, minus 28k, I, sh I should have actually added this, which is 
4 and uh, 4 and 36, which is 40. So I've added this together. Then what about 4K squared? Now, I have my discriminant. For which value of k will this be equal? I make the discriminant equal to zero. So there's the discriminant. I say 40 minus 28k plus 4k squared equals to zero. So I solve for k. Okay. So you factorize this and you solve the value of k. Then if you can't factorize this, what you can do divide this by what? By, you can use a quadratic formula to solve this problem. Okay, guys, okay. I think we, we don't have time. Or should I complete the problem? They can. Complete it. Okay. So let me rearrange this properly. Divide, this is 4k squared minus, uh, let me cancel this. If I, I have 4k squared minus 28k plus 40. I'm just writing this in the standard form, plus 40. Divide this by 4. I have k squared. 28 divided by 4 is in that uh, uh, 28 divided by 4. Divided by 2. Uh, 14, uh, 7? No. Divide by 2 or 4. I'm... I'm I'm my arithmetic. I'm dividing 28 by 4. <laughs> so 28 divided by 4 is 7. Is 7. Yeah. Thank you. So you have minus 7k. You divide that you divide that by 4. Also, you get 10. Then you can factorize this. The factors of this is actually 5 and 2, which is minus and a minus. That if you solve k, you get that k is equal to 2. Okay, is equals to five. Okay, great guys. Okay, we can finish the problem. The final answer: K is two and K five. Great, fantastic. Over to you, Abram. Thank you so much, sir. It's been a great lesson, and I hope you guys have also enjoyed it. I'm leaving you with a quote from Francis Chen, which says, "Our greatest failure shouldn't be just about failing." That's our fear. It shouldn't be about failing, but it's, su it's, it's succeeding on things that really don't matter. So guys, don't be scared of things that do not matter. Rather, care about what matters most. And we're here to help you whenever you're struggling. We have our help desk that is there um, to help you guys. So the link is on Facebook. We love you. And tonight, we just want to leave you in peace. All the best to everyone that is writing tomorrow. And what's up to you all, matriculants? Welcome to it. This is Len Extra with me, AB. It is a lovely Monday at Triple M Day. Mindset is Maths Monday. I hope you had a great day at school, and I know that some of you were writing, so I can't wait to hear from you guys. How did you go, how did you guys write? Um, uh, I'm sure you guys did well because I trust you guys. I believe in you guys. Well, today we do have a Wilson again. Say, so how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well on your album. I'm album. good. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah, good yeah. to be with you again today. Yeah, great, great. Fantastic day, guys. We have a uh, matric. And uh, I'm today I'm doing revision of functions, guys. And algebra, Greek levels, you can still stay there. I mean, um, the, the functions that we do, uh, actually in grade 11, you're doing metric. And the algebra, which is the same kind of a thing, I'll be looking at an example on nature of roots, uh, exponents, um, and, and those functions, guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. give away everything. <laughs> 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 you guys need to stay tuned. But well, you can also chat with me. Let's communicate and chat via facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Like that page, share that page. Uh, at the moment, we have about 79,500 and something like. So guys, let's get to 100 by the end of this year or by the end of this term because I have, I have trust in you guys. Don't panic because 
during this time, I know that you guys tend to panic a lot on the pitch, but don't. We're here to help you, and you guys should help one another on the pitch. That's our spirit. On Twitter, follow us at LenExtra. And remember, we do have your notes links on Facebook, which is the viewing option and the downloading option. And lastly, we have the Test Yourself link, whereby if you answer those uh, questions correctly, you stand a chance of winning this awesome case your calculate. You need this buddy during your exam. It's the best buddy to have ever. It has about 254 functions as we are doing functions today. So guys, you've, um, maybe Browson will share some of his tips later on on using this calculator, some of the tricks that you guys can use as mine. Okay, then horizontal shift. If P is bigger than zero, okay, there's, there's P, then this is a horizontal shift. P also, this is horizontal to the left, and when P is less than zero, it's horizontal to the right. And this moves the graphs up and down. Okay, if I add Q, if I make minus, then the graph moves down. If I add, then my functions moves up. Okay, this, those are for P and Q. Okay, let's look at the hyperbola, this side. Hyperbola. This is a standard form for the hyperbola. K over x plus p plus the q there. Same principle holds. P is the horizontal shift to the left. And p horizontal. If, if p is less than zero, it's horizontal shift to the right. And so on with the q. I can move the graph up and down with the value of Q. Okay, guys. And what about the asymptote? If X is negative Q, then I get my neg negative P, or Y is Q. Those are your uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes, guys. Okay, great. Let's look at exponential. What about exponential function? This is the standard form. Same thing. If P, this is the horizontal, shift to the left, okay? Okay, and P there is horizontal, shift to the right, okay? And your asymptote, which is Y is equals to P, is your asymptote. If you check your hyperbola, true, okay, pose the answer on Facebook, guys. Okay, great. I hope you try this challenge question, guys. Fantastic. Let's see what we have now. Okay. There's the summary there. By now, you know the standard form of a parabolic function. There's a standard form of a parabolic function. ax squared plus bx plus c. How do you find the y-intercept? You make x zero. That's how you find the x-intercept. You make x zero, then you get your y-intercept which is the C value in this case. For any graph, hyperbola, exponential, straight line, the same principle holds. Then the x-intercept, you make y zero. Remember, if you're struggling to factorize and so on, you can use your quadratic formula. So to get the x-intercept, you make the y zero, and then you, s you solve the x value. Okay, good. Remember, the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Because the parabola is symmetric this way. What is the x value that makes that parabola symmetric? So that's the x of symmetry, which is that, which is minus b is minus b divided by 2a. That is the equation of the axis of symmetry. To get the turning point is the axis of symmetry, then this value, you take the value of the axis of symmetry, which is x, you substitute that into the original function to get the corresponding y value, okay, to get your turning point, if it's in that form. Great. Another way for a parabola, if it's in that form, you notice anything, is that the completing of the square form. So the turning point in this case is minus p, which I get from there, and q 
There's your turning point. Matriculates or shortcuts on using this calculator. But lastly, we also have the Nokia mobile mathematics app, whereby if you log on it, you can challenge yourself and challenge other mindsters. It's all about mathematics. You can revise algebra and functions, what we're doing today, and let's see how well do you understand them. If you're struggling, we are still here to help you. Your code is simple. I two I K. I two I K. So guys, with that in fair ado, let's get to the lesson. Okay, thank you, Abram. Okay, guys, uh, welcome there out there. Uh, I hope you're ready. Uh, you have a pen in front of you. You want to try to do the problems. I mean, the nature of mathematics and how we study maths, you don't look at the problem. And there's nothing wrong if you do maths and you don't understand the problem straight away. That's, that's the nature of maths. Okay, so you try to do it again. That's the essence of mathematics in a way. You try to do it again until you understand it. You don't get worried if you don't understand the problem. Okay, and matriculants are there. You still have time. This is, this is June. You still have lots and lots of times. Grade 11s are there. Primatrix, you're also welcome to view the show. Okay, great. Let's see, guys, what I have. Uh, we have revision of functions in algebra. So I'll be revising the functions, functions and algebra. Okay, great. Let's see what I have. There I have a challenge question for you guys. Let's see what I have. You have a function, a graph, which is y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the parabola, which is given. Which of the following statement is true? So let's see there. There's the graph. Okay. Which of the following statement is true? Where b squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Is c bigger than 0? Is a bigger than 0? Or... Is b squared minus 4ac equals to 0, c bigger than 0, and so on, guys. I hope you're going to try the problem, guys. Post the answer on Facebook. Which of the following makes this true? You have two asymptotes, the horizontal and the vertical. What about exponential? You just have what? One, exponent, one horizontal asymptote. Do you have asymptote in parabola? No. I just have the axis of symmetry. Okay, great. Fantastic. Now... Let's look at another concept, exponential. Exponential laws. This exponential law, guys, remember, they only work if you have multiplication everywhere, then I can apply all this exponential law, guys. Okay? Okay? Same base, I add exponents. Same base, if I divide exponents, I minus exponents. And this is power to power. The exponents times that, and this times that, and that. And the lastly, law of exponents, guys. Okay, just to, to remind you this, I, I think by now you can, you can do this laws of exponents. Good. The nature of roots. I love this section. This is, this is one of the, my favorite sections in maths. So nature of roots. Before you do your nature of roots, your, expression, your equation must be in that form. And remember that delta is given by b squared minus 4ac. Okay, there is your delta. If I have ax squared plus bx plus c in the standard form, then delta, where do I get that delta? If you check the square root, underneath the square root from the quadratic formula, it actually gives you a delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, great. Now, let's check what we have there. If the roots are real, delta must be bigger or equal to zero for real roots. Equal roots... Delta is equal to zero. Rational rules is that delta is a perfect square, like 16, 25. X squared is a perfect square. The rules are rational. Irrational rules, delta is non-perfect squares, not equal to a perfect 